Okay, um, the last couple of videos I made were on jazz piano, okay, and um, there is a third video I want to make in that series, um, but I, I kind of, I, I've had a go at it, and it's not quite gelling yet, you know, I've, I've tried to shoot it about 12 times, but it's just not working. So I am going to do that, but I need to give it some more thought. So in the meantime, I thought I would um, make two or three you know, just uh, other videos to, to to fill the space, as it were, because it's been ages since I've made any. I, I've been really busy, but, you know, that's no excuse. I, I need to keep these coming fairly regularly. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to show you today are a couple of cool little turnarounds that you can also use as vamps, yeah? A little bit of terminological explanation there. A turnaround is a short chord sequence that you use to take you from the end of a big chord sequence, say the verse or chorus of the song, back to the start. Okay, so typically a song will be a chord sequence or a couple of chord sequences, like verse, chorus, that are repeated. Okay, so you get to the end of the chorus and you want to get back to the start of the sequence to start the verse again. Okay, and the turnaround is a short chord sequence, just a little sort of a little um, little clutch of chords that kind of glues the two ends together. So, let me give you a practical example. You know, let's imagine that you have reached the end of a chord sequence in A minor, and almost certainly the last chord will be A minor, yeah? But you want to get back to the first chord of the sequence, which will probably also be A minor, and it's kind of boring just to, just to sit there on the same chord, okay? So what you do is use a turnaround, and the turnaround I'm going to show you in A minor goes like this. And as you can see, the chord we've ended up on at the end of the turnaround is E7. Yeah, and as you will know, if you know a little bit about harmony, E7 is a chord that naturally resolves back onto A minor. So it takes us naturally back to the beginning. Yeah, it's the fifth chord in the scale of um, A minor. So it's, it's dominant. If those terms don't make sense to you, things like dominant and fifth and, and stuff like that, go back and look at some of my earlier videos on, on really basic harmony, because they're all kind of explained there. So, what a turnaround does is take, take us from the last chord of a chord sequence back to the first chord of the chord sequence via, usually, via the fifth or a chord that's like the fifth. Yeah? So, let's look at that one in a little bit of detail again. Okay, we'll get to... Um, this is the end of, our, end of our song and that's our final chord. So we go, um, let's play it again. There's the turnaround. Okay. Yeah. Or we can make it a little bit richer. Yeah. A couple of things to notice. I mean, the chords are very simple A minor, G, F, E minor, E major, or E minor 7, E major 7. Very, very quick chop there. Um, so the, the chords are very straightforward, just, just descending. A couple of things to notice. First of all, in any turnaround, usually, if there are several chords, then each chord only has one or two beats. In that particular turnaround, each chord has just two beats, and the E minor only has one. The E7 is a bar to itself, usually, so... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. You don't even need that last bar, you could do a really quick turnaround. And you're back to the start of the song, okay? Um, this kind of turnaround works really well if you're kind of playing bluesy, jazzy, funky sort of stuff. Yeah, less good for more kind of pop orientated material. Um, but, but great for, for blues and funk. Let's have a look at the. and jazz. Let's have a look at the chord extensions I'm using as well because I'm not just playing A minor, G, F, E minor, E major. Okay. Rather most of the time I'm extending the chord, and this is something I talked about in the jazz video, so we're using A minor 7, G. I'm tending to avoid using G7 because it sounds a bit corny. So a pure G chord, then F major 7, E minor 7, E7. And you can even extend those further. So A minor ninth, G, F 
major ninth, um, E minor ninth, and then at the end, if you want to be really cool, you can play that which is um, E major seven with a sharp ninth. Okay. So generally just kind of playing around with the chords, and in the right hand, really all I'm doing is playing the chords in a stabby way and using the left to make to add a little bit of rhythm. Whoops. Yeah, so the, the, there's various stuff you can do to play around with that. Um, as I said, you can also use that turnaround as a vamp. Now, what do I mean by a vamp? A, a vamp is a short sequence of chords that you, when you're accompanying somebody, it's usually when you're accompanying someone that you use a vamp, you can play over and over and over again until the someone you're accompanying, whether it's a soloist or a singer or whatever, is ready to come in. Okay. Now, that might be, you know, they might, you might be waiting for them because they're, you know, they're just coming up on stage or they've you know they're finishing their cigarette or the drink or whatever. Or often if someone's introducing a song, yeah, you can play the vamp until they're ready to sing it. So you just sit there while the singer's talking to the audience, yeah, just playing this vamp over and over again. And when she's ready, off you go, you're, you're ready to, to start the chord sequence. Just a useful thing to be able to do if you're ever accompanying people. Okay. Um, so that's one of them. You just kind of play around with it. As I say, at its core, it's a very, very simple sequence. A minor, G, F, E minor, D minor, A major. That's, that's a tricky bit, but I mean, you can, as I did there, you can just go A minor, G, F, E7, but I think that. That E minor seven is such a cool sound. It's, it's worth including if you can. Okay, however you want to do it. Also, just a nice one for a nice little progression there for just playing around with your improvisation. Okay. Um, I mean. Just all I was doing there was playing around with uh, A minor blues, uh, well, C blues scale really, and A minor pentatonic. Again, if I've, that's all stuff I've talked about in the past, so I'm not going to go into it here. But if you're interested, check out my earlier videos. But it is a nice little sequence to play while you're while you're practicing your improvisation in the right. Okay. Um, I said I'd show you two, so here's the other one, it's a very similar, but it's in C major, so again, you can use this in similar circumstances, but for major songs, simplicity will do it um, in the key of C major, as, as I said, you can adapt it for any major key, and it's very, very similar, but we're going a little, little bit richer, C major 7, B minor 7, A minor 7, F major 7, F major 7 with a G in the bass. This is more kind of mellow and, and kind of chilled out, but listen to it up to speed. Yeah, and again, it's, it's, it's just kind of a cool sound. Now, that chord is not diatonic, it's not natural in the key of C major, and I know I will get emails from people saying, oh, you can't play... Um, B minor in the key of C major, and most of the time you won't find that chord in C major songs. Yeah, sometimes you will, but very often you won't. But in that kind of little turnaround, just as a, a, a quite a quick passing chord, it sounds quite cool. Whoops, here we go. And again, you can kind of extend it. So C, um, C major 7, B minor 7, A minor 7, F major 7, F major 7 with a G in the bass. Notice that we don't go to a G chord there, that would just be a bit too, a bit too neat and tidy, but we use 
F minor 7 with a G in the bass. It will also work as uh, F major 7 with a G in the bass. It will also work as D minor 7 with a G in the bass, or even that um, A minor 7 with a G in the bass. Though that's a, a bit kind of a bit more remote, and it just sounds cooler than going for for the, which is a bit too neat and tidy. Okay. Again, you can play around with that chord sequence. Just a, just a nice one to play around with. Vamps and turnarounds often use that descending pattern, yeah? Because it seems to lead, you know, it's a, it's a kind of very natural, very obvious progression. So the listener's ear can figure out that actually it is a kind of middle bit rather than. Um, you, you, you know, a, a key part of the song starting again. Okay, so in, in usual style, that was all a, a little bit waffly, a little bit gibbery, but play around with those chord sequences. Um, if you have any questions, give me a shout. I always try to answer questions, though sometimes it does take me kind of weeks because I, you know, I get loads and loads, and it's great that so many people will ask me questions, but um, you know, it's a bit of a full time job answering them sometimes, but you know, I will try. Um, you might also be interested in my book, How to Really Play the Piano, which I always plug at the end of these videos. 1495 for the print edition and 995 for the digital edition, and that's my council tax notice, which you don't unfortunately get in uh, the book. Uh, shows how I file things in this place. Um, yeah, so digital edition is 995, it's UK pounds, 1495 for the uh, print edition, and um, print editions usually, well, it depends how you get them, if you buy it on Amazon um, it should be with you in three or four days but at the moment we've only got Amazon availability in the UK, soon we'll have Amazon availability in the States. If you order it direct, seven to ten days usually, obviously digital edition you get it straight away. Um, so there we go. Okay, um, I'll stop waffling away and I will be making another video fairly soon, so subscribe, do all the rest and watch this space and I will see you again very soon.